Well, I've been toying around with the Yak Attack stuff again today, trying to decide on a few things. I used uh, the short tracks right there for rod holders. My plan was to put two more short tracks, one right here and one on the opposite side over there. But I bought the only two short ones they had. The next one they got is like six inches. So I might have to order two online for back here. That's if I go with the short ones. I got the fish finder mounted right here on this rod holder bracket just to see how it sits. And I could have done all this last week, but I've been talking back and forth to the guy I bought the fish finder from to see if he wanted me to send it back and get the Cruise 5 since that's what I wanted. This Cruise 7 is an upgrade that I only paid the Cruise 5 price for. So finally after three days of back and forth, he said, don't worry about it, just keep it, enjoy it. So I got a Cruise 7 for the price of a Cruise 5. My plan is to mount it right here in this heavy duty bracket. I may use a short one. I ain't decided. And put it right here by the seat. But I may mount it right here on the seat. I got to play around with that a little teeny bit. But I can tell you it's not going there. I just put it in there so you can see how it sits on that bracket. That's the fish finder bracket that comes that's made for the water ants or the sim rat. I think I'm going to need a longer oar. I got a six and a half, two six and a half foot oars for my propulsion. But standing up in the boat, I think this oar is going to be too short. This is sculling. You row it like this and scull. You don't have to have no motor if you didn't want one. Sculling is a good process for moving around. But you need a long oar to get back there where you can scull and stand up right along in here or sit down if you really want to. I may have to go to a seven or eight foot oar. I'll have to play that by ear. I'll try this out of the and see how it works. But I got to figure out where to put. I mean, I, I may move the rod holders back here, closer to the seat. Two people, one person can sit right there and have, to have two rod holders, and I can sit back in and have two rod holders. That's what my plan is. You don't know how plans are. When you got a teeny boat, you got to make a lot of plans. But I can't, I, don't, I need some, some brackets. I'm going to go get it in there in a minute, and we'll see how it looks. Well, sitting up here for 10 minutes thinking, moving stuff around, I think I'm going to mount this piece right here, right on that edge right there. And then I'm going to mount the fish finder on that. That gives me a plenty of view in here. It's inside the boat. It's easy to see since they're so damn big. And it's sort of out of the way, you know what I mean? I may move it in inbound a little bit like that. That person can still sit there and have a good time. Now we have to get the transducer. A lot of people run the transducer to the back and make a PVC holder and stick it in that. They make a thing called a switchblade. Yak Attack does. It locks into this track right here. Got a weird arm, it slips over the side, and the transducer mounts right on it. That's uh, one option. I don't know a damn thing about switchblades, but they look interesting. I'm going to call Yak Attack Monday and see how it holds up under power. You know, these are designed for paddling or for uh, what do you call those things you paddle with your feet? Paddle, you know, they got a name for it. I can't think what it is. But anyway. You're only going to go three or four miles an hour. 
of course, when you go fast, it has another arm. You just raise it up out of the water. It's like, you know, it's like these things. They flip up out of the way so you don't have to have it in the water. When you get to where you're going, you're going to slow down. You stick it back in the water again. So it's pretty universal, the switchblade thing. I got to have power. And I, I could put the... Uh, I could put the switchblade right where that rod holder is, move the rod holder back here, or behind me, or on the seat. Bolt that down right there. I could put the battery in that compartment right there, and the transducer would be right there on the switchblade in the wire. That may be a, a simplest way to make it work. I'm going to try to take it out for a spin tomorrow. Not with the fish finder, of course, because I don't have any power for it yet. I got to come up with a, a battery. Yaktek makes a really nice lithium battery for 129 bucks, I think. 10, 10 amp, 10, I forget some damn thing. But it run, it run for two, three days. Comes with a charger and all. It's a little teeny thing. So you can buy like a little motorcycle battery, stick it down in here, put it in a little waterproof small box like we used to put our sovereigns and our uh, SE Pro in. Just run a cable clam out for the wire so no water would get in it. It would sit right in there perfect. That could be where the battery ends up going right there. Whether it be lithium or a small regular type of battery. They're only going to be $30, $40 compared to the hundred and some dollar lithium job. Or I'm sure there's other kind of lithium batteries out there so i'm looking for comments that you guys that might have these lithium batteries but sound off here and let me know and if you got any switchblade people let me know about the switchblades i i'm really contemplating that switchblade i like everything i see about it switch to my iphone my uh, capacity filled up on my ipad it's old anyway i don't know where we were but I said I got four coats of tongue oil on these rails and the seat. I'm going to put another coat or two on them this afternoon while the sun's still nice and hot. Stick it back outside. I'm in the garage now, of course, where it's cool designing and figuring. Okay, I'll get back to you in a little bit.